All right, you already know the drill. Diving right into the first unconventional Notion tip for productivity is instead of downloading an image, saving it locally, then uploading it as a page icon, what you can do is right click on the image, copy image address, go back to your Notion page, click your icon, custom, paste the image address, enter, and boom. Super cool, I know. And many of you ask me, Jeff, how do you come up with these amazing tips? And my answer is always going to be the same. Perseverance, diligence, scanning comments from our YouTube videos and stealing ideas from viewers, and staying hydrated. Moving on. I only have my home screen page open right now, but if I command click another page from the sidebar or from within the page, I open up additional tabs that saves me a lot of time navigating back and forth throughout the day. I usually have three tabs open at all times. My home screen, the project I'm focusing on for the day, and and a flexible tab where I use a keyboard shortcut command P to quickly search for pages I need to refer to for information. Like most browsers, you can use command option left or right arrow keys to cycle through the tabs, command T to open up a new tab, and of course, command W or middle mouse click to close the tab. There are two limitations right now. First, I hate that you can't pin tabs like you could in most Chromium based browsers. And second, you can't click, hold and drag tabs around, which is weird. Um, by the way, I do have a video on how I set up this home screen. So I'll link that down below. Moving on to databases. I love how Notion basically copied Excel and Google Sheets in that you can press any of the arrow keys to start navigating the table rows, press enter to start highlighting a certain cell, press enter again to make edits, and you can press shift a down arrow key and press command and control D to paste the values down. I find this much easier than having to use like my mouse and dragging this selection down, which you can see it doesn't really work sometimes. Pro tip, you might already know you can press the three dots here, uh, layout and choose to wrap or unwrap all columns, but you might not know you can actually click on a specific column and choose to wrap that column only. While we're here, don't forget you can customize your column icons by clicking on the column header, clicking the default icon, info, for example. And if you wanna go full on minimalistic, you can actually leave the property name empty and have a super clean look. But this only works for one column per database. And for those of us who use gallery views within our Notion setup, a huge productivity time saver is instead of clicking into the page, to edit our properties, you can simply click the property and make edits directly. While we're here, you can see that my new day 2.0 template is a recurring one, meaning Notion automatically generates a new day 2.0 page every day at 5 a.m. So by the time I wake up and sit down to plan my day, I have an empty page ready to go. The idea is to use these repeating templates with recurring actions, like weekly meetings. Set the template to be generated 10 minutes before each meeting so you can start taking notes right away. Small things like this pay off big time in the long run. Pro tip, for databases with a date property, you can create a view and include a filter Date is relative to today, this week. So you only see pages with a date that falls within this current week. Pro pro tip, if you want this clean Monday through Sunday view, go to your settings, language and region. Uh, for start week on Monday, make sure this is toggled on. And by the way, I have to give credit to another viewer, Paris the Webbit how cute, for the recurring template trick. This next tip is best illustrated using an example. If I create a new page in my weekly agenda database, you see both the date and the day of the week properties are empty. But if I select a date, you see the day of the week field automatically populated as well. And this is thanks to this simple formula, which I'll link in the description. And again, shared with me by another amazing viewer. Thank you, Yushun Wang. I really should just take all the credit myself. I mean, Who's gonna know? I'm too nice though. Nice guys, finish last. If you use Notion on your smartphone, you definitely wanna include a toggle block at the beginning of pages you constantly refer to. For example, this page is really long. So what I can do is I can copy a link to this block right here, scroll all the way back up, highlight the word promotion, command V to paste, so now on my phone, I can click to expand the navigation toggle and click promotion to jump to that section directly. By the way, Notion is not sponsoring this video, but it is supported by those of you who subscribe to my paid productivity newsletter. Link in the description to learn more. Moving on to organizational best practices. In my Life OS dashboard, I have a section down here that houses all my master, or if you're cute like me, multiverse, 
databases. Uh, this is important because I might have 10 or more views of the same database spread out across my Notion workspace, and I need to know where the original database lives so I don't delete it by mistake. For example, on my home screen, the source for this week view is my all tasks database, right? And it's just filtered for a seven day view. If I go to a project, this tasks view also draws from my all task database and it's only filtered for this project specifically. So the tip here is twofold. First, don't default to creating new databases whenever you start a new project or page. See if you can create a master database and just insert different views using relevant filters. Second, pick one location to store all your master databases because embarrassingly enough, I have deleted a database before by mistake when I thought I was deleting a view. Staying within this project page, I always like to have a useful info section where I keep all the information relevant to this page. I usually have a divider line here, three hyphens as a shortcut and an archive page. I can throw all outdated information into. Moving over to Notion AI, I know it's all the hype right now, but I've only found one practical way to use it so far. In my all notes database, I have a page template here where I've included a custom AI block under the key takeaways section. You can do the same by forward slash custom AI block. As you can see, I use a little bit of role prompting here. Uh, you are an extremely detail oriented note taker. Summarize three key takeaways from this page in bullet point format. Do your best to fact check the information you are summarizing. Now I create a new page using that AI notes template, right? I take some notes uh, based on what I read in this article on what happened to Silicon Valley Bank uh, under the notes section here. I click generate and the AI generated summary is definitely a bit oversimplified, but it does capture all the main points. Pro tip, you can use a free Chrome extension, save to Notion, to clip the content of an online article, use the notes template with the embedded custom AI block, giving you a super smooth way to quickly save an article and summarize it in basically two quick steps. Quick update, editor Jeff here, Notion just released a new buttons feature and it's a game changer. In my projects database, for example, I have a trips template here. And inside, as you can see, under the useful info section, I have these pages by default to remind myself to visit friends, family, and interesting places whenever I travel. I used to have to manually add default tasks on the right over here. For example, add travel dates to calendar. But now let's delete this. With just one click of this button, boom. All default tasks related to every trip are automatically populated. To get started, forward slash button and name your button. Add new tasks, uh, add a step. And for this example, I'm going to add pages to an existing database. For me, it's going to be the all task database. You can name this uh, default task one. And here's the important part, okay? If you've linked your task database uh, to your product database, which you should, you want to make sure the project, the related project property here is this current page. This ensures all tasks created by pressing this button is for this project specifically. If you apply this to your own workflow, you'll probably end up with something looking like this. I won't go into the other use cases because Thomas Frank just released a comprehensive buttons video. So I'll link that down below. Uh, wrong video. If you enjoyed these tips, you might like my video on how to create a productive weekly planner on Notion. See you on the next video. In the meantime, have a great one.